Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We're about ready to start the session. I know, it feels like a sauna. Uh, sweat with your friends. Because I think sweating with your friends is certainly worth it. Because the next agency uh, that you're going to hear and see was responsible for one of the biggest viral hits of the year. A surreal combination of an action star, an Enya soundtrack, and some inspired cinematography created a piece of epic work. Our next agency, Forsman and Borden Fords, reveals the secret behind the Volvo's Trucks Live test series, why running an, an agency without creative directors might be a good idea, and what these two topics have got to do with each other. Here today are Martin Brinkvist, creative and senior partner, Bjorn Engstrom, creative and senior partner, and Annika Weibrud, director brand and marketing communication from Forsman and Borden Fors. Please welcome them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi, I'm Martin. I'm a copywriter and senior partner at Forsman Bonafors in Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, today, we'd like to take you through our journey with the uh, Volvo trucks from the very beginning up until now. It all began in 2010. Uh, we were approached by Volvo Trucks who wonder if we would be interested in taking care of their global account. And um, I remember sitting there in this conference room with my colleagues and I know we all had the same thought. We all saw the same before us. So we politely said and gave them names on a, on a bunch of agencies we felt were better suited dealing with the traditional business to business advertising than, than us. But a couple of weeks later, Volvo Trucks came back and asked us the very same question again. We thought it all over. Another two or three weeks later, or sorry, um, hey. yeah, this was the answer, of course. And another two or three weeks later, they didn't give up. They came back. And this time, we said yes. Why? Um, okay, let's be honest here. This is true though, but um, the main reason was that Volvo told us a secret. Uh, they were building a brand new truck, the first in 16 years. And they did not want a traditional business-to-business -business agency making the global campaign. Uh, because this wasn't just another truck, and they did not want just another launch. Uh, this became our motto throughout the process, and um, there we were, four creatives and two account directors and a planner, knowing nothing about trucks, absolutely nothing at all. We decided to start school. Uh, the goal was to know more, or at least as much, about trucks in general, and Volvo trucks in particular, than the client themselves. We also looked into what Volvo and the trucking industry had been up to when it came to advertising for the past couple of years, and with a few exceptions, like this one, it was, it was very traditional business-to-business -business advertising. And it turned out that it hadn't been very effective either. And the main reason for this is that it's a very scattered target group, difficult to reach. From fleet owners buying 200 trucks 
to the Lonely Ranger just buying one. Some of them not interested in trucks at all, like Carlsberg or Tesco, for example, not having transports as their core business. But we found something very interesting when digging deeper. The decision makers are surrounded by lots of influencers, whereof the most important one is the driver and family and friends to the driver. Wives, because it usually is wives, unfortunately, caring about you, wanting you safe and sound back after your road trip. And kids, caring about whether their dad, because usually it's dad, is driving a cool truck or not. And friends, for the same reason as kids. Uh, we also found that it's getting increasingly difficult to recruit good drivers. And there's a huge difference between a good driver and a bad driver. Not only when it comes to punctuality and fuel consumption, but also hence the fact that the drivers are often facing the customer's customer. I know this is a really tacky get a picture, but I'm a copywriter, so please forgive me. Um, anyway, we decided that regardless of what ideas we will come up with, they should contribute to make young people interested in the trucking profession, because in the long run, that would gain us. One last thing we discovered when making the research was that Volvo is a premium brand set to be number one, but their media budget is way smaller than the competitors. So we simply had to be smarter than the rest. So in summary, we have a scattered target group, hard to reach, but with lots of influencers around them, and a small media budget, especially if they have the ambition to make a global launch, which we did. So the conclusion was, go wide, but hit tight. And what do we mean by that? That, that we should go for a YouTube hit and create as much PR as ever possible but also to be relevant and base everything on strong features of the truck. Because by doing that, our ideas will work on different levels. Because what you see here is uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme making an epic split, but what a truck driver sees is two trucks driving backwards <coughs> with a never seen before precision. And this thinking goes for all of the films in the light test series, it's double layers thinking. Uh, but let's wait with this, the frosting of the cake, and go back to where it all began, 2012. Yeah, it took us almost two years before the, the, the cam campaign came out. Uh, and as I said, it's 16 years since Volvo released the new truck. It's a long life cycle of trucks. It's like, I think, I think it's 20 years mm -hmm. life cycle of a truck, much longer than a car. So it's a huge moment. But nobody knew about this, and the whole project was a very well-kept secret. And after long discussions, we decided to launch a YouTube video showing the new truck before Volvo officially announced they even had one. And the response was massive, and the film was all over the place. Right. Here's the play of the day. Oh, Take a look at this. Look at the top. Uh, it's an ad for Volvo. They want to show that their trucks are real smooth on the road. So they go to this European highway, and it's a ballerina stunt. That's Faith Dickey, 23-year-old. She's going to walk on a wire no. between two speeding trucks. Uh -uh. But here's the catch. She's got to get across before they get to the tunnel at the other end. This might look like something out of an action movie, but actually it's a real-life stunt. It's called the ballerina stunt. Su último reto ha sido completar el recorrido desde un camión. Das zwischen zwei Lastern gespannt ist. Sa passion, c'est le slackline. Es ya dos Die Amerikaner. Volvo. Volvo. Volvo has filmed one of the scariest road stunts. Uh, the ballerina stunt was featured on 75,000 news sites and blogs in 225 countries, reaching more than 162 million people. And the trucking industry, were taken, they were taken by surprise. And Volvo's approach to all of this was complete silence. They said nothing. And they were pretty cool, and there was a reason for it. 
because the ballerina stunt was only a teaser, a way to attract the industry to the real launch, which took place on the web and was a live broadcast from six cities around Europe. Directly after the broadcast, a digital launch magazine went live on the same platform. The content was based around a top 10 news story format with multitude of films and interactive modules. The magazine was available on all devices. It was also turned into a site which we put where the target audience liked to hang out, on eBay. To make this possible, Volvo put the very first truck up for auction with a starting bid of one euro. This was the very first time anyone used the standard eBay ad as a platform for a complete launch site. And in 10 days, the auction hosted 170,000 visitors and the truck was sold for twice the market price. The use of eBay as a launch platform became big news in the trucking industry and in business media. This was the end of 2012. And just when we were about to celebrate this successful launch, Volvo gave us a new brief. Okay, I'm coming over here. Uh, and this was a new brief. Does it work? Yes. Quite a challenge, actually. Four new trucks. <laughs> and we went straight back to school again. And we had this countless and endless meeting with all the technicians of Volvo trucks. And after that, we realized that uh, Volvo have a tagline for a reason, a tagline, driving progress. When it comes to invention, innovation, they are really state of the art in the trucking industry. And we also realized that uh, Every truck in the new range got their own unique features. And that the ballerina stunt was only the first in a series of live tests. So we started to think, we need to do live tests, real tests. And the next test, the live test two, was for this truck, the most robust truck of all trucks in in the world, I would say. And who could prove the robustness better than the president of Volvo Trucks itself, himself? And here he is. Hello. My name is Klaus Nilsson, president of Volvo Trucks. I've learned that when you want to make a YouTube hit, you need a hook at the beginning of the film. And here it is. This is a hook from the new Volvo FMX made of cast iron, and it holds up to 32 tons. That's far more than this, so you don't need to worry. In fact, you don't need to worry about anything. The new Volvo FMX is the most robust truck we've ever made. This new FMX truck also comes with an impressive 300 millimeter ground clearance. And that's 25 millimeters more than the head of the Volvo technician, Roland Svensson. Hello, I'm Roland Svensson, technician at Volvo Trucks. I have been working with the ground clearance of the new Volvo FMX. I'm very proud to say it's fantastic. We have a stiff plate protecting all bikes and parts, and we have positioned airspeed members and the air balloons higher up. This means 300 millimeter ground clearance, just a little bit more than my head. If you want more information, please go to volvotracks.com.
Thank you. And finally, the Volvo FMX is extremely easy to steer, especially in rough conditions like this. It's a quarry in Spain. And it's actually so easy to steer that a hamster can do it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this experiment for Volvo. Today is the ultimate test of the steering system. You will see a hamster steering a truck from the bottom of this quarry to the top. This environment looks beautiful, but it is very, very dangerous. The hamster cannot look out the window, so we will have the driver, Sean, guide their hamster with a camera. Good boy. With the VDS system, it's very easy to steer. I can steer it with my fingertips. Hi, Sean. This is Charlie. Lovely. Good luck. Thank you. At all these films, where all the live tests were actually followed up by content that Volvo trucks produce themselves, uh, like this, uh, the technology behind the Volvo dynamic steering, and I can show you really a bit of a nerd to appreciate a film like this, and still it got more than one million views on YouTube. We also did uh, ads and in-depth interviews with the technicians, so the core target group, the truck buyers, could really dig into all the details in the in the um, what was behind the, the new technology, uh, and when we were launch, launching the new FL, that's the smallest and quickest of the uh, trucks in the range, we also turned the live test into a complete site called the Chase 360. And here it is. The Chase 360 is the interactive experience of the Chase video. It's a maneuverability test that lets users take control of 28 cameras to see the action from more angles along with exclusive behind the scenes footage. The interactive journey starts with a 360 degree material filmed from the truck's roof. It continues through five different video streams that users can seamlessly switch between at any time. Panning around shows extra content marked by graphic icons along the route. Users can pause the action whenever they want to watch unique footage like interviews with locals. Yo soy, yo de corrida de toro y en toro mucho, lo vivo mucho, yo soy turista, vivo mucho el pueblo. The sound design reflects the environment and the tonality changes with each different view. All views have a separate sound mix and the 360 view in particular has dynamic 3D sound depending on where the camera is pointed.
and the aim for each light test was to increase the fan base. Because you have a lot of free when you, the fan base is growing. Uh, when you launch the next film in the, in the series, you will have uh, all the fans out there clicking on the film. And as you can see, it grew rapidly, and it was all building up for the, the grand finale over 2013. And this time, the live test number six we focuses on the Volvo dynamic steering. And it's quite a revolution in the trucking industry. Without this invention, it would be impossible to drive two trucks backwards with the guy standing on the mirrors, even if it was Chuck Norris. But it was this guy. I've had my ups and downs, my fair share of bumpy roads and heavy winds. That's what made me what I am today. Now I stand here before you. What you see is a body crafted to perfection. A pair of legs engineered to defy the laws of physics and a mindset to master the most epic of splits. The whole campaign so far has uh, resulted in 100 million of views in, on YouTube. We have 8 million shares online. And we also got <laughs> thousands of spoofs. Adding another 50 million views to the campaign. And what I think is the most impressive figure is actually the 20,000 of editorials. And that's a lot of thanks to Volvo Truck's own PR department we worked very closely with and beyond. And all credit should be on in the PR department for this figure that made, we calculated this own media value of $170 million. And this is when, where you're supposed to say, great guys, but did it sell any trucks? Well, as usual, it's hard to tell what's what and what did what. But what we do know is that uh, the engagement in the core target group, the truck buyers, has been absolutely amazing. And after seeing the films, half of the truck buyers in the world said that they are now more likely to buy a new Volvo truck next time. So we could say that we, we managed quite well. Uh, except for one thing then. We haven't planned for life after Van Damme. <laughs> so you can imagine we were going to present a new campaign for Volvo Trucks. And we couldn't work. We couldn't find any new ideas. We have to phone them again and again and tell them, sorry, we can't present. We don't have any ideas. Because instead of counting sheep, we're going to bed. We were counting views. And the more views, the more anxiety. And we were trying to find out what the hell had we been doing? And how could we turn this into a recipe for uh, viral hits? And I think it was just before Christmas last year that we finally, with the relief, realized that there are no recipes for viral hits. And if there were a recipe, 
we probably, it's probably been out of date when we launch the next campaign. Um, but that still, there is a lot of people out there in, on the net that are doing a lot of analysis of the Epic Split. For example, the, the, this one. It's from um, Creativity Post, and they have a, the story code behind Van Damme's viral splits. Every second is analysed, and it's in seven steps you can do it. Every second, it starts with mystery, did you know that? Empathy, surprise, relevation, admiration, astonishment, contagious, and finally mastery. But it's not very helpful trying to find new ideas. But we do have an answer to a question that I think a lot of you also asked yourself now. It's this one. How did we get Volvo trucks to buy all this? And who could answer that better than Annika Viberud? What you say, Annika? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will do my best to answer this question. I'm Annika Weber. I'm for coming from Volvo Trucks. And for those who don't know... Thank you. Volvo Trucks is a part of Volvo Group, and Volvo Group is a truly global company not, uh, hosting not less than four truck brands. Volvo Trucks, Renault Trucks, UD Trucks, and Mack Trucks. But I have the pleasure to work with Volvo Trucks. And I can also say that Volvo Group does not any longer make any cars. So that is a completely other company, actually. Uh, but to answer the question, I need to go back in time a little bit because uh, October 2012, uh, one of the major or biggest reorganization ever was announced within Volvo Group. Uh, and that happened at the same time where we were supposed to, to launch new trucks. But for us, this was very good because we managed to gather all communication disciplines within one department. Uh, and while others uh, were facing this and trying to sort out a mess that comes out from the organizational changes, we actually both succeeded in launching the first and, and most important truck in our range, the Volvo, Volvo FH, but we also managed to create a very solid communication strategy and we call it 2020. This strategy has been a very, very vital part of how did we say yes question, because all these crazy initiatives have been thoroughly developed in accordance with the strategy. And the strategy has also been the backbone in the approval process. So what does it say then? Well, relevance, releva relevance, and relevance. And we, we do believe that this is one of the success factors in this, that we have been relevant at all parts. And in the strategy we have clearly stated that relevance is of great importance. We need to be relevant in all steps in the per se tunnel. And this, I think, is so simple, so I don't even want to show it, but it's been a simple, simple part of the strategy or a simple picture, but it has helped us a lot in this process because what we have done is that we have thoroughly evaluated all things according to the pyramid. Where does it fit? What work should it be done? What, what should be done? What should, what should we achieve with each piece of work? And that helps us quite a lot in the internal work as well. And then, of course, in the strategy, we clearly state that we should be true to our brand and our brand promise, Volvo Trucks Driving Progress. This is also a very important filter question uh, in the daily work. If things are driving progress, then we say yes. If they're not driving progress, we say go back again. And then we are a global company, so for us it's quite easy to think global. Uh, we, but communication in awareness phase is very much global today. 
and you need to create co a content which has a global relevance. In the same time, you need really to create local engagement. And that is a challenge, but I think in this process we have succeeded quite well. But you need to work with all parts in the organization to really secure that they, their local markets, etc., buy into the material and to make it theirs and to, to help distributing and use the material. This is a one way to, to look upon communication. Uh, but I don't, I don't like this way. I think it's, this is very outdated. Uh, what we have done is that we have looked upon it this way. We have selected a couple of very important messages. Then we have uh, created interested, uh, interesting material uh, supporting these very few messages. And then we have conveyed all the, the, these messages in all chain channels, uh, more or less simultaneously. And of course, to do that, partnership has been extremely important. Partnership between us and Forsman and Bodenfors, of course, but also between Forsman and Bodenfors and other creative agencies or um, event agencies, etc., etc. And, and that I would like to take the opportunity while being here, having all these creatives in front of me, to, to really emphasize me as a cli client, how much I appreciate when people can work without prestige together reaching one target. That is, I think, essential to, to have a success like we have had. Uh, so that is something for, from, from a client to you creatives to bring with you. And since I'm uh, not a copy, I have a slightly better build, uh, better picture than, than the copy guys, but maybe not, uh, not too good. Maybe you have another one if you have an art director up here later, I don't know. Then planning has been essential. Planning, planning, and replanning. To create a massive campaign like this, we need to have uh, everyone on board in each and every step. Uh, on the same time, we need to be very agile and fast moving. We, we, we have replanned this campaign several times, changed the order to everything to build up and to use the assets the very best way in order to build this fan base as they were related to before. Uh, but we believe, and we believe one of the success factors in working this agile way, that is really that we have had the opportunity to work with a world-class creative agency with very flat structure. Yes, I agree. I'd be stupid if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, I, we, we strongly believe that one of the main reasons that was, this was made possible was due to the way we organize, organize ourselves at First Man of Bullen Forest. Um, out of 130 people, 64 are creatives. And it doesn't look like this. We don't have any creative directors at all. We don't have any executive creative directors or global head of executive global directors or whatever. Um, we're, we're just copywriters and art directors. Uh, we're all craftsmen. Because we don't see what form our hierarchies add to the creative process. To us, they are just uh, boring and expensive. Instead, we have what we call the floor, which is exactly what it says. It's the floor, meaning that all ideas that come out it can be a film script, uh, it can be a strategy, it can be a, an ad, whatever, is put on the floor. And it's everyone's obligation to say what they think, if it's good or bad, how to develop it, how to do it instead, and so forth. Um, and we're saying this, I think we tend to get the same question back. Uh, okay, but if you don't have any creative directors, who gets to make the decision? Uh, and the answer to that is that it's always up to, uh, when it comes to that, it's, it's a team working on the assignment that makes the final decision. So for example, we involve the trucks. It's me, Bjorn, uh, Sophia and Anders, who are the creatives, together with the account directors, of course. And we together um, decide what to go forward with and present to the client. Uh, and there's a good thing about this, because uh, if you wouldn't work like this, you wouldn't be able, as a simple copywriter like me or Bjorn, to uh, experience epic moments like this. <laughs> yeah. It's me, Sophia, and Jean-Claude. 
uh, we went home very early that evening. <laughs> we are very Swedish. Always do that. Work, work, work. But another thing is also that if you have this way of working, it means that uh, the creatives, the copywriters and the art directors are very involved in other things than just creating ideas. We don't have any departments like planning department or digital department. We all work with it together. So we are very much into the strategy and to the planning. It also makes that, that the planners and the, of course we have planners and we have account directors, of course, and they work very much together with us and they get very interested in our findings and our way of looking at things. And it also means that um, we work very closely with our clients in partnership. Yeah, I'm also a copywriter, so. <laughs> <laughs> and when you work very closely with uh, your clients, you get to know them very well. And when you know them very well, you have your trust. And it also works the other way, or doesn't it, Danica? Yes, it does. If you can explain a little bit about this. Yeah, and I, I think this, this flat structure, we, I mean, we are both Swedish company, and maybe that's the Swedish culture, but we have very the similar situation with Volvo. Volvo, of course, is a huge company with a lot of hierarchies. But on the other hand, it's also a very easygoing company where more or less anyone could meet with top management if they would like to discuss anything in particular. And, and as an example for that, I would like to say that when we, when we persuade or, or send the message to, to Klaus for the first time that he was going to stand on the truck hanging in the towing hook 20 meters over the ground in Gothenburg Harbor, there was only the project leader from us, the, these two crazy creatives and the safety experts. And one meeting was all that it, that it took and then, then it was, the decision was taken that yes, I, I'll do this. It will be great fun. And I think that, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's afraid of heights. Yeah. <laughs> and I think well, to, to, to end this, I could say that we would very much like to keep it this way and we would like to continue to work in this way and we would like to live up with the motto that uh, not just another campaign is uh, a good thing. And you? Yeah. Uh, Can we challenge you on this? Or? Yeah, if, if fast companies right, uh, we will. Um, according to them, the, the next uh, live test series is a, a trip into space. Um, well, let's say uh, we're on it. <laughs> so. Thank you. Vi börjar gemensamt. Vi börjar.